Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be making a silicon 111 surface, a bulk slab model of that, and then we will be adding vacuum. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot. Please leave a comment just, you know, saying hi, saying what's up. Uh, let me know what you're working on. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'd be honored to help you out. So just, you know, shoot me a question. Anyways, hope you enjoy today's video. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and open up our system. So I have a cubic system of silicon, you know, very standard. This is basically what you get. Um, what we're going to do is cut the 111 surface. So for those who don't know, uh, the 111 surface is going to be this one. Uh, what we want this to be an exposed unit cell face. Right now it's not. Uh, right now the exposed faces are the uh, 010, 001, and the 001, oh, sorry, 100 and the 001 surface. So how do we visualize these? Let's just go to the bound. Let's expand the unit cell using the boundary method. So that's where I press boundary. And I'll expand it uh, 5 by 5 by 5. Press apply. You can see I got this sort of big structure here. So it's a little too big. I'm going to go back and make this 4x4x4. Four by four by four. Okay, there it is. Press OK. Let's center it with A. So now let's go to Edit Lattice Planes. And we're going to drop in. So basically this is, you know, like I said, you can see how it aligns right on this face of the unit cell. This is the 110 plane. If I make this 010, hit Enter it has another face. So the zero, so the one zero zero, the zero one zero, and the zero zero one, these are the sort of pre-exposed unit cell faces. Um, if we want to cut an internal plane, like the one one one, press enter, you can see this is an internal plane. And what we want to do is we want to make a unit cell where this is the exposed face. And then we want to add vacuum because we want to make the slab model. So let's go ahead and let's make this a more contrasting color. Blue and yellow contrast very well. Uh, and then we're going to move this. We're going to press like five, basically move it in the middle. Let's go ahead and make it six. Actually, no, we need to make it, we'll actually make it like four. And we're going to put it perpendicular to the screen. Okay, so th this is how you start. So there it is, perpendicular to the screen. Now we need to find periodicity in this dimension. And so where does this periodic atom lie? And it looks like it lies up here. So the question is, does it lie here or up there? And let's maybe try to see if we can see this a little better where this is going to be next. It's going to be, I can't really tell actually, it's pretty strange. Let's go ahead and just shift this by six. I don't, it's definitely not there. Let's go seven. So the question is, is it going to be this atom or not? Well, what we can do is make it a little easier to see the periodicity. It looks like it's not very apparent in this dimension. So we need to shift it like this, where we have the overabundant choices, and then we need to we need to pick which choice it is. So it's going to be. Let us go from. So this atom here, connects with this one. So I think it's. It's this one here. Yeah. You can see it here pretty well. So we actually have the periodicity in this dimension now. It's right there. Um, let us go ahead and pick this unit cell direction now. Here's actually a new technique I'm going to show for this video. Let's go to new. Let's change this to bright red, another good contrasting color with blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the best plane. So I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go ahead and use this here. And we're going to calculate this plane. So you see how I'm just selecting this plane here. I want to see what this plane is. 
So we have these atoms selected. Calculate best plane. 1 minus 2, 1. Very useful trick. We're going to shift it over to 1, distant. Perfect. That's right where we were suspecting. Okay. So this is a this is a, a pretty cool trick to get to get this. So I, I would have never known what what this vector was just by looking. So then what we have to do is find periodicity in this direction, and you might be tempted to think that it's just this atom, but then when you go like this, you can see that it, it doesn't line up. So although it looks like it does in this direction here, you can see it doesn't, and it's actually this one here. So we need to shift it a couple. So we're going to do, let's try minus two. Perfect. Perfect. It actually worked perfectly. So there it is. So now what we're going to do is press OK. We're going to cut around these faces, cut all the atoms outside. So be very careful with your uh, selector here. Here you don't have to be as careful. It's kind of cut around the red. It's the yellow one where you got to be careful. And it was just on that down one. Okay, so now what we have to do is keep this yellow perpendicular to us and move it like this. Now we have to find periodicity in this dimension. And you can see relatively easily that it's going to be just this right here. So go ahead and go like this. And there it is. There is your 111 unit cell. Um, you can go ahead and now what we're going to do is figure out our new lattice constant. So you go ahead into your text editor, make this file called basis change, press F4, and get something that looks like this. Okay, so let's go back to Vesta. This is going to be our new origin. So 0 0.5 to 1.5. So 0 0.5 to 1.5. Let's go back to Vesta. This will be our A direction. Actually, let's make this our A direction. 1, 2, 1. So it'll be 1.0, 2.0, Okay, perfect. 1, 2, 1. And this first one, or no, and this one here will be 1, 1, 2. 1.0. 1.0, 2.0. Now let's go back. Our C will be here. 1.53, 2.5. 1 1.53, oops, 3.2.5. Save this with F2. 2.5, yep. Now what we do is we go to our, back to our text editor, and we're going to subtract the origin from each of these corresponding values. So 1 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 2 minus 2, 0, 1 minus 1 1.5, minus 0 0.5. Now for the B, we will also have 0 0.5, we'll have minus 1.0, and here we have 0 0.5. For C, we're going to have 1.0, 1.0 again, and 1.0 again. Okay, so we save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up our original file. Edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. And we're going to enter in that rotation ma matrix that we just made. So my 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then we had minus 0 0.5, and then minus 1. So select OK, yes, yes, apply. There it is. There is the new unit cell. Select OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and delete these bonds on the outside just for the visualization right now. So there's basically, this is the unit cell where the 111 face, uh, this face here is exposed, right? So to go ahead and save this, file, export data, silicon cubic, and we'll put 111 
base dot VASPs, save it, Cartesian coordinates. Let's exit out of here and reopen it. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is if you wanna just delete these bonds right away and you don't have to manually do it, just go to bonds, delete, apply. Okay, beautiful. Now what we have to do is um, we are going to check our, uh, we're gonna expand this now to make the slab model. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it uh, three by two. So we're gonna edit, edit data, unit cell. And we're gonna transform this uh, three by two. Okay, apply. So there's our, our silicon surface. This is the 111 surface right here. And what we do is we are going to now save this file, export data, 111 face, and then we have a three by two by one unit cell. So I'll go ahead and save it. Cartesian coordinates, select A. Now what we need to do is press this C and what we're gonna do is destroy periodicity in the A and B dimension. So do that by doing this delete, this delete, that's it. Uh, we're gonna put vacuum in the C dimension, so we actually need to preserve periodicity in that dimension. Uh, by the way, by preserving periodicity in this dimension, you actually destroy it. It's very strange. And by destroying periodicity in the A and B dimensions, you actually preserve it. Because when you put these coordinates into quantum espresso or CP2K or some type of electronic structure package, uh, if you were to include these atoms over here, you'd get too many atoms in your system. You basically uh, need to only include this atom because it's translationally invariant with this atom. So now that we've saved this, we need to save this as an XYZ. I don't know if I've done that yet. So click on this, delete this vast part, and come here to XYZ, save it, press no, come to your text editor. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go back to, I'm gonna press Control Z a couple times, and I'm gonna save this as a VASP again. So, come here to VASP, and we'll put uh, with, with vacuum, save it, Cartesian coordinates. Now come to our text editor, come into that XYZ file we just saved, Copy these silicon atoms, come here into the vacuum, paste it, delete these atoms, and make this an 84. Then I add 15 angstroms of vacuum. So you add 15 to this, it'll become 24. You then save it. Let's go ahead and open that one up with the vacuum. Beautiful. This is your silicon 111 surface. Let's go ahead and, and delete these extra atoms, but I want to keep the ones inside, so I'm just going to delete what's on the outside. Yeah, so there it is. Let's see how it matches up with uh, this one here. So we're going to keep this here and have our snippet and then come over to here. And you can see that, yeah, that is the surface with some vacuum. So basically you'd put your molecule on here and you'd have your silicon 111 surface. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, one thing I wanna do check is our original silicon had eight atoms, our 111 face has 12 atoms. So, there's more atoms in the unit cell. I'll probably change this to a 12. This is just the name that appears in the VAS file, so it doesn't matter. It's the name that appears um, when I go to edit data phase. It's this name here. So yeah, that's how you make a silicon and 111 surface, expand the unit cell, and add some vacuum. Um, so I guess we'll make the thumbnail now. That's it. Okay. Take care, everybody. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned a lot. Please hit the subscribe button. We basically covered everything in this video. And I'll see you next time.